So thank you very much uh, for having me here today and allowing me to speak. Uh, my case began in 2009 when I started giving seminars for the Austrian Freedom Party and uh, the seminars on Islam were infiltrated by a uh, journalist who uh, surreptitiously recorded the seminars and then uh, handed over the transcript to the authorities which uh, then decided to prosecute me first for hate speech during the trial it became very very clear that I had not committed any hate speech whatsoever but the judge at her own discretion added a new charge which is called denigration of religious teachings of a legally recognized religion and uh, I was then uh, found guilty under this uh, under this law and uh, asked and told forced to pay 480 euros and you're probably wondering what it, what it was that I did. Um, I actually wondered what you would call the behavior of the 56-year-old Muhammad who married a six-year-old and consummated the marriage when she was nine. And you were and fined for that? I was fined for saying that and I was actually asking a rhetorical question asking uh, what do you call it if not pedophilia? So I didn't say Muhammad is a pedophile, I yeah. did not say that. I said what do you call this behavior if not pedophilia? And in Austria today it's enough to be fined? Certainly this is enough to be fined. So if, if you say something like that about Christianity, nobody will be uh, prosecuted. But only if it's about Islam. Okay, so what was your reaction on fine? Uh, I did not want to pay the fine, actually I wanted to go to jail to set a precedent, uh -huh. uh, but because of certain uh, technicalities I was not able to go to jail so I was forced to pay the fine and I was very unhappy about that and I vowed to myself at the time that I would take this case all the way to the very very top uh, courts. So I would first take it to the uh, to the very top court in Austria mm -hmm. and if I lose all the way to the top uh, courts, to the Supreme Court, I would then uh, take it to the European Court of Human Rights. What's the situation today? And uh... Yeah, so what happened was I appealed the cases, uh, the case uh, first to the, to the uh, district court lost there. I then went to the Supreme Court, I lost there. And after that I, just, I, I said, you know, we, you know, once you have to go all the way, right? I mean, you can't stop in the middle. So uh, in 2012, uh, my lawyer and I uh, took the case to the European Court of Human Rights and the main question in this petition to the, to the court uh, is, does, basically, does freedom of religion trump freedom of expression. So that's something the court will have to decide. The Supreme Court said freedom of religion trumps freedom of expression. That's what they said. So we want to take it. That's why we said we have to take it to the European Court because of course it should be the other way around. Yeah. And uh, we're very hopeful uh, that we can win this case. First of all, uh, about a year ago we were informed that the case was accepted, which already is a big victory for us because 99% of the cases are thrown out. So it was very interesting and very um, um, uplifting to realize that the court believes that this, is, uh, this case merits uh, looking at, into. And uh, I do have quite a Quite, some, quite a lot of support from different NGOs in Europe who also petitioned to the court on my behalf and uh, as a matter of fact I'm very hopeful that, that we can win this case because if we win this case this is not a case about Elizabeth winning the case this is a case about yeah. everybody There's two options, either we win or we lose. Yes. If we win, this will be a victory for all of us, especially for our right to freedom of expression. It will mean that freedom of expression is once again accorded the importance that it has had in the past and has lost in the 
past years or even decades. So this will be a big victory uh, for all of us, also for our children and our grandchildren, hopefully. If we lose, uh, first of all, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't even want to consider losing, honestly. But if we do, um, it will set us back many, many years, maybe even a century or two. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a thought that is, that is actually almost incomprehensible uh, because it will take us to the dark ages. It will take us into a Sharia-controlled Europe, which is something we don't want because we, we will return to uh, full-scale blasphemy laws. And uh, I, for one, don't want that. I will fight it, and I don't want to live in a Sharia-controlled uh, society. If I wanted to do that, I would go to Saudi Arabia. I don't want to do that. I want Europe to be a uh, beacon of freedom of expression, at least uh, second in the First Amendment, following the First... I mean, we all know the First Amendment is the cornerstone of freedom of speech. But if we can't have that, at least we should have, you know, a statement by the European Court of Human Rights. We should be allowed to say whatever we want within a very narrow frame, a very narrow legal frame. Right now it's like this. We want it to move back to here. Don't let it stop you. If you have a clear vision of what you want, which is freedom of expression, then you should go all the way to the European Court if necessary. Uh, the petitioning to the European Court is free of charge, so you can actually do that. You don't have to stop and say, well, I don't have enough money. Also know that there, you are not fighting only for yourself. You're fighting for a lot of people. Again, this is not about me, this is not about Elizabeth, this case is about everybody. And this is something that you should, you should really keep in mind when you uh, are in the same situation that I was in. And again, I mean, you didn't kill anybody, you didn't steal, you didn't lie, you only said the truth. The truth is painful to the other side, it's not painful for you. So be brave. We need your bravery and uh, good luck and, and um, all the best to you. Don't ever give up. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you.